every once in a while, uh, I'll get a borderline aggressive uh, comment posted um, on my YouTube channel or potentially on a Reddit post advertising one of my videos. This comment uh, complains about my content uh, in some way. This comment more or less complains about uh, the quality of my content. Now, usually this is through the lens of it not being accessible um, or that the content is incomprehensible. Sometimes the user will then go on to uh, prove the thing that I was proving in the video um, in sort of a, a very surface level way and with assertions that don't make any sense. Now, I'm certainly not going to sit here and insist that my content is beyond criticism. Uh, some of my videos are definitely better than others, and I definitely want to remake uh, some of my uh, videos or dive deeper into some of the topics that I've already covered. I do think in general, I've gotten better at uh, communicating and perhaps being more charismatic um, on camera, but I, I'm very much aware that uh, there's a lot to improve upon. Now, despite this, I still think that uh, a lot of these comments actually stem from um, a misunderstanding about who this content is actually for uh, and why this content is made. It might just be that this content uh, isn't intended for you and that your frustration, I don't know, with me or something um, is misplaced. And listen, if you're currently watching uh, this and you're watching my content and you're getting something out of it, uh, I appreciate you. Uh, please continue watching my content. So I thought this would be a good uh, chance to uh, discuss uh, the channel, some of the active uh, sort of content classes uh, that I'm covering and why I cover uh, these topics. So the first and most general kind of content I do um, are my streams. Uh, usually I do these with uh, James Lambert. Uh, we currently have plans to make this more regular, but that's sort of besides the point. Uh, so this content broadly is for everyone, or perhaps you might say science enthusiasts. So we just talk about science and topics in science that we care about and are passionate about. If you haven't checked it out, uh, James is an absolutely fantastic speaker um, and he's really knowledgeable on a variety of topics. So I definitely recommend uh, checking that out uh, if only to, uh, to see that. So another uh, class of easy to digest content that I do is just talking about being an early career scientist. So this is already uh, a little bit more of targeted content. I'm trying to speak to people who are either interested in how becoming a scientist works, or they themselves uh, going through the process um, and are interested in hearing, you know, maybe what the next two years might uh, have in store for them, next four years or something like this. So I make this content uh, to normalize um, these types of experiences and to tell people my experiences so that if they are going through something similar or they think something that's happening to them is abnormal, um, you know, they have a voice that will tell them you know, what happened, uh, what, what happened um, on another person's journey. So I do hope some people find that um, helpful and I'll definitely continue uh, making these videos. But uh, so let's move on to the rest of my content where I do get uh, these types of comments that I think are a little misplaced. The rest of my content is strictly speaking uh, educational. And in particular, I focus on very specific subjects. So um, again, what I'm about to lay out isn't meant to be gatekeeping. There are plenty of excellent uh, physics uh, YouTube channels um, for say um, science enthusiasts to learn different topics in physics or maybe physics channels targeting more junior undergraduate uh, students or maybe high school students. So plenty of channels probably pop right into your head. Uh, but like Khan Academy, Parth G um, and so on. And so, um, that space is one, really saturated, um, and B, uh, you know, it doesn't really cover the topics I like talking about. And unfortunately, it doesn't communicate ideas at the level of maybe abstraction or mathematical rigor or whatever you want to call it. You can't talk about the topics that I want to talk about without assuming uh, the listener has some amount of background in physics and math. So first and foremost, my channel covers lots of topics in statistical mechanics. So why do I cover uh, statistical mechanics in particular? Well, I found in my experience that StatMech is usually a very poorly taught subject um, in undergrad. 
And at the same time, it's also my absolute favorite topic if you haven't uh, if you haven't guessed already. Now, picking this topic specifically to be the focus of the channel obviously comes at some cost, right? Um, so if I want to help students be better exposed to statistical mechanics, to think about statistical mechanics on a more intuitive level, I need to assume that they have some amount of background to talk about uh, these topics. So StatMech is usually taught at a third or fourth year level, depending on the institution, maybe sooner, uh, maybe later. So the target audience is exactly that it's senior undergraduate students if you don't have the right background to digest the content um unfortunately uh, like of course my communication is going to be uh, horrible for for these topics because i'm going to assume you know a bunch of things that you don't now if i do do a video and i'm covering a topic uh, where i'm making assumptions about your knowledge and you do fit into this category of a me of a more senior um undergraduate student or above, like maybe you're a graduate student or, you know, even a postdoc or whatever, and I'm not covering uh, topics that you think shouldn't be assumed. I mean, let me know, of course, like, like if, 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 if it's not something that people are regularly exposed to, then I should be covering that topic to introduce to you whatever I'm talking about, right? So definitely uh, do a quick search on the YouTube channel to make sure I haven't already covered it. Uh, but if I haven't, please make requests. I want to make these videos. I want these videos to be helpful. Um, so if I'm missing uh, core content that you think would be helpful, uh, then request it. So another topic that I'm currently taking a break from uh, due to my current uh, computer setup. If you haven't noticed, my webcam freezes a little bit. I'm recording all these on a laptop. Are these classes of videos on numerical computing or computational physics uh, usually focused in C++? So listen. To learn computational physics and numerical methods, you need to know some physics and math. So again, the target audience is people who have some background um, and say again, that background should be probably a more senior person in their undergraduate degree or something equivalent. Like this is the minimum. It's not the, it's not the core target audience. It is the, the minimum required knowledge uh, to start and consume this type of content. Now, the last big class of topics that I do are what I call modern topics. So these are introductory videos uh, to topics that come up in my research. So why do I make these videos? Well, because these topics are of course super cool um, and I wouldn't work on them uh, if I didn't think they were really cool. Uh, but the deeper reason is that a lot of undergraduate students um, aren't actually exposed to topics people work on in research. There isn't a lot of science communication targeted at students uh, who might be in the process of deciding uh, what direction to take their science career. For example, entering their master's degree or entering their PhD. There also, just in general, isn't a lot of science communication aimed at a more um, advanced audience in more of a casual way. You have uh, formal talks, um, and you might have formal lectures, but there isn't a lot of content that just says, hey, look at this cool topic. I'm gonna assume you have more of a senior undergraduate level of knowledge or above, and I'm going to sort of uh, paint the picture for you. Why is this cool? Um, and here are some cool things about it. So a bunch of uh, graduate students that I've met um, mostly went into graduate school uh, blind. They had a very vague understanding of what type of research uh, they might be involved in uh, by jumping um, into this research group or that research group. To be honest, I think it'd be really cool if more physicists uh, made content uh, like this. So the question is, is, is this content for you? And that's up to you, of course. Um, I can't make a completely comprehensive undergraduate or even high school uh, education um, on this channel. And of course, I'm sort of shouting into the wind here. I know these comments uh, won't stop. Uh, but uh, this is my understanding of my channel and perhaps with this understanding if you watch this video uh, you know maybe that means that uh, you'll feel more free to ask for specific types of content or specific uh, improvements to my content so interestingly we are approaching uh, maybe in a week or so uh, from the two-year anniversary of the channel which is really cool well it's really the the two-year anniversary of the first video I posted uh, that's currently still public. So when I started this channel, I was really unsure of who my target audience uh, was going to be. And you can probably tell that by the early videos 
sort of being very varied uh, with the explanations. And of course, I mean, this might change like in the future. I might be more tempted to teach more junior undergraduate topics um, in the future. Uh, but what I do know is that what I want to do is I want to cover topics um, at the level required uh, to appreciate the topic. You can't really learn um, a lot of topics in physics. And what I mean is like really learn uh, without getting your hands dirty in the mathematics. Now I'm definitely going to try and improve um, how good my videos actually are. Um, so I will always appreciate uh, feedback on that. But anyway, uh, random rant done.